Hello, how are you doing? In this video, I'm going to talk about LLM embeddings. Have you heard the term embedding, but you haven't had time to research it? If so, then watch along with me for the next few minutes and I will quickly get you up to speed. Okay, let's get started. What is an LLM embedding? Well, LLMs can take in text inputs and generate embeddings. Embeddings are either one or more sequenced and dimensional vectors. In this example, there is an LLM generating an embedding for a text document. Quick note, although in this example, we are showing an embedding being created for a text document, you can also create embeddings for sentences and even words. So what does the embedding generation process look like? Well, step one is the tokenization process. In this process, the LLM tokenizer converts raw text into tokens. In step two, in the embedding process, each token is mapped to an n-dimensional vector through an embedding layer in the LLM. The result of step two is a generation of an embedding, which in the example of a text document is a sequence of vectors where each vector corresponds to a token and captures its meaning in n-dimensional space. Quick call out. I'm showing a generic LLM in this diagram. Turns out there are special LLMs optimized for creating embeddings. All of the providers of LLMs also provide versions of their LLMs optimized for generating embeddings. A nuanced feature of LLM embeddings are that they are context sensitive. What does this mean exactly? Well, the same word can have different embeddings depending on the surrounding text, allowing the LLM to capture the meaning of the word. Here in the first sentence, the guy is cool. The word cool is used to describe someone who's trendy or hip. In the second sentence, it is cool outside at night. The word cool is used to describe temperature. In these two examples, the same word cool will have a different embedding because of the surrounding text, allowing the LLM to correctly capture the meaning of cool in both of these sentences. So why do system builders care about LLM embeddings? Why should you care? Well, when you build a system with an LLM, you're likely to bring in proprietary data from your organization, and you'll want to augment your third-party LLM with this data. So how exactly do you integrate your proprietary data into an LLM-driven system? One approach is to take your proprietary text documents and systematically create embeddings for each of them. Now, where do you store these embeddings? Well, the best place to store these embeddings is a vector database. I know what you might be thinking. Great, another kind of database. After you mastered relational databases, along came key value pair data stores, and then column or data stores. And then we got graph DBs for social network related use cases. And then came blockchain databases for distributed immutable ledgers. And now, and now we have vector databases. But here's the deal, guys. Vector databases are optimized for storing vectors and doing the type of vector operations that come with that. Specifically, they are optimized to efficiently handle similarity searches, as well as vector insert, update, and delete operations. They're able to create efficient n-dimensional vector indexes, which enable them to support all of these ML and LLM driven use cases. In a world with purpose driven data stores, you want to consider a data store that is optimized for the query patterns in the system use case. Doing this gives you the best performance with optimal operating cost. I have an upcoming video on vector databases where I will go deeper into this topic. But for now, you should have a good conceptual understanding of why vector databases are needed for embedding. So lastly, quickly show you the flow for an LLM driven system that includes proprietary data stored in a vector database. First, the user sends a user prompt to an LLM. Next, the LLM tokenizer converts the text in the user prompt into tokens. The user prompt is also submitted to an embedding LLM which generates a query embedding and uses this to perform a similarity search on the vector database. Semantically relevant documents are then paired back up with the original user prompt 
and the LLM uses both of these to generate a response. The response embedding is converted to output tokens, and from there, the output tokens are converted back to a user response. By the way, this type of LLM-driven system is also known as RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation. In summary, LLM embeddings enable you to capture your proprietary data sets and integrate them into your LLM-driven system. These types of LLM-driven systems are also known as RAG systems. I'm working on an upcoming video on LLMs and RAG, but this gives you a quick high-level introduction to this type of LLM system. Okay, thanks for watching. This video, along with all my other videos in the ML AI Knowledge Concepts playlist, are listed in the YouTube description. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing, we all love technology and we're all excited about the innovation with the cloud, machine learning, AI. But don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Go outside, go swimming, go hiking, go climbing, go surfing, get out and move your body. And if you do, tell me in the comments, I wanna hear about it. And with that, have a great day, thanks.